तीन महामंत्र जय श्री माता जी गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन लेट अस बिगिन टुडेज मेडिटेशन बाय प्लेसिंग आर राइट हैंड ऑन द मदर अर्थ लेफ्ट हैंड इन आर लैप फेसिंग श्री माता जीज फोटोग्राफ Let us bring our complete attention on our left channel. And let us pray to Shri Mata ji to clear our left side. Shri Mata ji, please clear our left channel. please remove all the negativities of our emotions of the past shri 
Shri Mataji, please give us the pure desire and enlighten our left side. Shri please strengthen our left channel. Now let us bring our right hand in our lap and left hand towards the ether. Shri please clear our right channel. Please remove all the anxiety, all the stress that we may have accumulated for the future. All the excessive thinking, excessive planning and all the actions that bring imbalance within us. Shri please strengthen my right channel. Please enlighten the potential and the kinetic energy within me. Let us bring both of our hands close to our heart. Shri you are the doer. You are the enjoyer. You do everything. We do nothing. Shri we humbly surrender at your holy lotus feet. You are the balance within us, the present moment. Shri we surrender again and again at your holy lotus feet. Let's bring our complete attention on the Muladhar Chakra and we will do a quick four petal meditation. The four petals of the Muladhar are like catchment areas for the blessings that are bestowed by Shri Mataji. We can bring our hands in our lap. And let us put our attention on the first petal. This petal goes in the downward direction towards the ground. This petal, it holds the joy of Brahmananda, the pure and absolute joy of divinity. So here we pray. Shri please bless us with the joy of the Brahmanand. The eternal joy. Shri please bless us with pure and absolute joy of Brahmanand.
Shri Mataji, please bless us with the pure and absolute joy of Brahmanand. Let us try to bring our attention slowly towards the Sahastrara after every petal. Now the next petal or the second petal goes towards the left. So let us bring our attention on the second petal of the Muladhara towards the left side. This petal holds two blessings. The first blessing is that Sri Ganesha removes the obstacles from our ascent. So let us pray. Shimadaji, please let your Sri Ganesha Tattva remove all the obstacles from our ascent. Shimadaji, please let your Sri Ganesha Tattva remove all the obstacles from our ascent. Shri please let your Shri Ganesha Tattva remove all the obstacles from our ascent. The second blessing of this petal is that it holds the majesty and dignity of the pure spirit. So we pray, Shri Mataji, please fill each and every cell of our being with the majesty and dignity of the pure spirit. Shimataji, please fill each and every cell of our being with the dignity and purity of the spirit. Shimataji, please enlighten the second petal of our Muladhar Chakra. Again, let's slowly bring our attention on the Sahasrara. Now we move our attention on the third petal. This petal goes in the right direction. And this petal holds three qualities. The first is that Sri Ganesha is absolutely dedicated and surrendered to his Holy Mother. And we will pray for the same dedication and same surrenderance. So we affirm, Shri please fill every cell of our being with complete dedication and surrender of Sri Ganesha to your holy lotus feet. Shri please fill every cell of our being with complete dedication and surrenderance to your holy lotus feet, just like Sri Ganesha. Complete dedication and complete surrender. The second blessing of this petal is the wisdom which Sri Ganesha endows, and third is the pure knowledge of divinity. So let us collectively pray. Shri please bless us with absolute wisdom of your Shri Ganesha. Shri please bless us 
with absolute wisdom of your Shri Ganesha Tattva. Shri Mataji, please bless us with absolute wisdom of your Shri Ganesha. The third quality of the second petal is pure knowledge of divinity. So let us pray. Shimataji, please bless us with the pure knowledge of your divinity. Shimataji, please bless us with the pure knowledge of your divinity. So this third petal represents complete dedication, complete surrenderance, pure wisdom and pure knowledge. Shamataji, please enlighten the third petal of our Muladhar Chakra. Again, raising our attention back to the Sahasrara. We will now put our attention on the fourth petal. This is a very important one as this goes upwards. So this fourth petal of the Muladhara sits directly on the Sushumna Nadi and it goes upwards. Now this petal holds two blessings which are very very important for our ascent as well. The first quality of this petal is the fearlessness that Sri Ganesha has in the knowledge that he is the child of Adi Shakti and therefore he is one with divinity and nothing can harm him. So let us pray with full faith, with full confidence. Shri please bless us with complete fearlessness of your Shri Ganesha. And let us say this again with full confidence in our heart. Shri please bless us with complete fearlessness of your Shri Ganesha. We are your children. We are the children of Adi Shakti. We are one with your divinity, Mother. So please endow us with complete fearlessness, just like Sri Ganesha. The second quality of this last petal. is that because it is sitting directly in line with the Sushumna so Nadi, with our central channel, all the Amrut, the divine nectar, trickles down on this and it opens, it opens our spirit, it enlightens our spirit. So let us pray with love in our heart. Shimataji, please fill each and every cell of our being with the nectar of your divine love. Shimataji, please fill every cell in our being with the nectar of your divine love. Shri please enlighten our fourth petal of the Muladhar Chakra.
Let us slowly raise our attention from our Muladhara back to our Sastrana. With our attention on Sahasrara, we will listen to a talk given by Shamataji. I was telling you about how difficult it is to be a mother and a guru. Because both are very contradictory functions. And especially for a person who wants to be in charge of your salvation, to be the Mokshadayini, it is extremely difficult because the path is so so delicate and so treacherous that all of you have to come yourself, walk across. And if you <coughs> fall this side or that side, there is disaster for you. I'm watching your climbing and I see you coming up with a mother's heart and a guru's hand. And then I get the glimpses of people falling. I try to tell them, come up. Sometimes I shout. Sometimes I pull them up. Sometimes I love them, caress them. <coughs> you can yourself judge within yourself. How much I've worked on you, how much I've loved. But how much do you love yourself is the point. I've told you that for a Sahaja Yogi, the whole thing should be decided by the witnessing power. Now the witnessing power is silent, it doesn't talk. If you are a very talkative person, then it's not going to help you much. You have to come in balance. <coughs> for the first time in this incarnation I have started talking and I get through trouble because I am not used to this kind of talking. So for you people, it is necessary that you should not talk unless and until you feel like talking. And very few sentences, conclusive. As I told you before, the tongue is the master of all the organs of distraction. If you could master your tongue, you have mastered all of them in a way. Because everything has to be palatable. For example, you look at a woman. If she is not palatable, then she may be beautiful, but you don't want to look at her. She decides, the tongue decides about the person. If you want to eat some food, if it is not palatable, then you don't want to eat that food. It has to be palatable. <coughs> then a thought also. A thought has to be palatable. If it is not palatable, you are not going to have it. So the deciding factor is the tongue, the root of the tongue goes up to the Vishuddhi Chakra, which controls your ego and super ego, or you can say that the tongue is reflected in super ego and ego in a way. Through your tongue, when you speak, one can make out whether you are in the realm of ego or super ego. She expresses, she decides. But if you understand her, then you know how to handle her. She's your friend. And Saraswati herself 
recite in your tongue. If you know how to handle your tongue, then <coughs> Sahaja Yoga can rise very higher. Because when others meet you as Sahaja Yogi, they also see how the way you talk, the way you eat, the way the things are palatable to you. It is the tongue that decides. If you are really very much involved, you will be amazed that if you eat some food somewhere, immediately the tongue will immediately throw it out. It won't hurt if it is something wrong. If some prasad so-called is given to you, which is given by some wrong type of man, immediately your tongue will throw it out. It won't be able to take it in. And even if you take some or other food down in the stomach, still the tongue will inform the brain that throw it out. And the brain will inform the stomach that throw it out. It will be unpalatable. So the action of Vishnu in the stomach up to the action of Sri Krishna with the same personality is all just by your tongue. So you must know how pure, holy your tongue should be. That when you take the name of your mother with this tongue, you must know it has to be the holiest of holy. It is very important how you use your tongue. Those who talk very bluntly are just the same. Those who talk very sweetly to get something out of you. Is the intent? As I told you, it controls ego and super ego. Even if the yogi understand that the witness is also here at the should be checked. So your witnessing power will increase and decrease according to your time. Of course, it controls 16 subjects. It also controls the muscles of the eye. It controls all the muscles. It controls the palate. It controls the teeth. It controls the ears. But here, you hear something, you cannot control it. Tongue you can, because that is the thing which releases, which goes out. With the ear you cannot give anything to others. That is just one way. This is double way thing. You take in something and also you can throw out something. It has a double purpose. It is a very important organ and that's why we have to look after our tongue. When the Kundalini is rising, that means one thing is there, that your attention has become subtle, from growth to subtle. But it has to become subtler and subtlest and then it has to go beyond that. By becoming subtle, only it comes up through the Agya, because Agya is just like a hole in an eagle. So it penetrates through that, through the subtleness. Because of the subtleness, <coughs> your attention sees everything but in a subtle form. <coughs> now this is a new experience for you. That's why you do not recognize what is that. In a group of Sahaja Yogis, you can witness these things very carefully and clearly. There is one person whose eyes are roving still around. He's a Sahaja Yogi. He's sitting down, he's looking here, looking there, looking that side, who is coming, who is going. Of course, this person is still in the growth state, you can say. Though he's got his attention up here by Mark, as he's pulling it out to see and hanging on to it. But still the person himself is still dragging outside into the growth. So don't bother about that. But even the person who is now, say, attentive, we can say attentive, because if the words are not so precise. Even if you notice such a person, you will find his two forces in a very subtle way are acting. One is his subtle ego, another is a subtle super. When you become
become subtle, suddenly you get also powers of the subtle. <coughs> Let us see the ego side of it. You start feeling inside yourself in a very subtle way that you do not recognize that it is ego. It is too subtle to be recognized. That you have got powers now to cure. You start feeling that now you have power to raise the Kundalini. See how it goes down segment to movie. Then you start feeling you have power to express yourself. Because you think you have learned Sahaja and now you know, know the essence of it and you can talk about it. This subtle ego develops into you. And the fourth type of subtle ego develops. When you see the other person's super ego is developed. That is the most dangerous. It so happens that some people who super ego develop now because they have had previous gurus, previous problems, previous, you see, the way they have been following religion, some mistakes and all that. <coughs> because of their mistakes, their super ego develops. You see something happening to them. Say an ex, a Mr. X, he's born. That a super ego is coming on to him, some negativity is flowing into him. So his ego starts developing against that force in a subtle way. Now he calls it a positive force. It is a positive force, no doubt. But he overcrosses it. When he overcrosses that side, he tries to push the super ego another person. He trips over. He thinks he's doing the right thing. Of course, he is doing it in a way. But to a point. And then he becomes very hot tempered. He goes on passing remarks about others. He says harsh things. That's how the subtlest point starts. To a point is all right. To a point because. In this I would say Ganesh and Jesus should be treated as the judging, judging point. Christ did not mind when he was crucified. Not only that, but he asked for forgiveness for all those. But if his mother was even touched by somebody, he would have taken out his 11 rudras and killed them. That's the point. When it comes to your mother, then of course, your ego and super ego both have a meaning. But beyond that, if it starts directed at every third yogi, then you don't know where to have the balance. For example, then such people, anything done to them also, they identify themselves as mother. And they think, no, no, he has said it to me, that means it is to mother also. It is not. You must know where you are criticized and where your mother is criticized. These are two things. That's why I said judging point is correct. When he was crucified, he accepted it, though he was so much one with his mother. But still he could strike that line. When you are crucified, you are not cried. But if anybody says anything against the mother, then of course. Now try to understand yourself. Now you are watching yourself. Whatever I am saying, you are watching yourself. It is for your good. That is how you find somewhere a person who gets a super ego invasion. First of all, super ego invasion is very, very deep and subtle. It's extremely deep. It comes into you in such a manner that you do not understand it. The other person who is very positive, so-called, will think that that person has got a negativity. But he won't know that he is overcrossing his positivity towards negativity itself because once you cross this line, you go to this side. Once you cross this line, you go to this side. So immediately you are becoming negative once you cross this point. And it's the Sahasrara is the Brahmarandra. Beyond the Brahmarandra, if you are pushing down, then you are crossing to the other side. You are playing into hands of other people. Now you must judge yourself and see, now, hello Mr. X, how are you behaving now? Immediately become a witness, you see, witness of yourself. Now how the super ego and ego, you see sometimes in, in, in some people, sometimes the ego presses the super ego and the super ego presses the ego. I see. They don't know whether they are egoistical or whether they are dominated. They really do not know. They cannot decide. Because it's such a going on, wobbling all the time. That's why I say, by check. You must sit down. Settle down. See if it's here. Am I settled? Watch in yourself. 
even you can feel the force actually you can feel the force moving from this side to this side you feel the force moving from this side to this side. try to bring it in the center now ego and super ego when they go on like that you can say wobble one to another <coughs> it happens like this at one moment you start feeling dejected frustrated hey how is it done then hey the other moment you sit on your side sit on other side you ask other to get out this is bad i didn't like that man that fellow came that fellow caught me that thing happened this thing happened to exchange you move to that's not way that's not the way to so it so yoga sahaja means that you are a witness sahaja it has double meaning sahaja is normally used for words it is simple uh, you are in a sahaj method means you are a witness you watch it you can be seen they are just witnessing they are not saying anything they are just there it is to be it is just to be at this point are we that every movement dealing with anything then you will not have any organizational problem you have organizational problem because you are not a witch you will find two types of people one who will say i am suffering too much the others will say no not me then they interchange also their attitudes interchange you can mix them but you can just know where to stop it you become a witch silent after talking for one minute you just become silent that's the best way i think it i can say a practical way is for your tongue is to be silent as far as possible to be silent and be watching but some people are silent and brooding that's the worst thing that you are doing no silent and watch neither brooding not planning how to hurt others and then suddenly a sentence will come out which will be so filthy so cutty so horrid so full of venom that you think from where it has come oh god such silence is absolutely useless it should be like a river flowing the river has its own depth and on top it is flowing it's just one mark that kind of a silence one should have not a fourth one but a silence of a bit even such a person is talking inside the flow of the silence you are one with that silence which is filling you up all the time and you can witness that in every leaf in every movement of the leaf you see the silence they do not speak but they manifest in the same way you do not speak you manifest of course human beings are higher than them because they speak but if speak becomes a burden a problem a cutting instrument it is better not to speak <clears throat> another thing a sahaj yogi must know that eyes are very important for sahaj yoga when the kundalini rises then the dilatation of the pupil takes place because you have seen the children how their eyes are dilated gaping at everything what is happening just gaping silence the complete silent seeing goes on through the eyes and that's why eyes are very important you must learn to fix your eyes within yourself in your heart humble down in your heart fix your eyes in your heart is uh, i say that way but i don't know if you can do it i don't know if you can do it but if you could do it that's a very good way of doing things looking at everyone gazing at everyone seeing this seeing that is a very bad exercise for your eyes it's a very bad habit try to keep your eyes low on the earth mother earth watching the lower part of the body than the face because face if you are made that way that you can watch the face is all right but you are not yet made best thing is to see to the feet and your eyes will touch their growth sense feet from where the sensation of vibrations go up upward and the kundalini rises better actually those who suffer from low kundalini rising if they could rub oil on their feet and wash their feet it's a very good thing that's why christ washed the feet 
Awesome disciples. I wish I could do that if you allow me to permit. Because the whole grossness is in the feet. And if you touch somebody with your eyes, real eyes, people I say, their feet, most of their grossness will disappear. And you won't have that much problem with them. That's why Christ washed the feet of the disciples. You also wash your feet and keep them clean so that the grossness drops out. I'll explain in brief way, but if you want to ask me questions, ask. Because still I find that the Sahaja Yogis are not rising as fast as they would. Because the bringing Kundalini up to this and up to this is possible for me. But taking it back into your cross thing is your own job, which you have to do. In Marathi, they say, it, Adi Kalasa Magapaya. I have built the top, the dome for you. And the dome is now to be supported by you. I have taken you to the dome. But you cannot bring it down. Because either you are frustrated with yourself. By being frustrated, what are you going to gain? Or else you are frustrated with others. Just be silent. And be witnessing. As Sai Baba has said, Saburi. Let us just try to be in meditation <clears throat> for a few more minutes before we finish today's meditation. As we finish today's meditation, I thought we could finish with this beautiful bhajan. Um, this bhajan has always, always touched my heart. And listening to all the yogis say, singing to Shrimataji with so much dedication, such joy and such gratitude towards our mother is always, it always brings so much joy to my heart. So it has a beautiful video, so I hope you enjoy and we'll finish the meditation after this. Jai Shri Mataji.
Let us all collectively bow down, raise our kundalini and put ourselves into a bandhan. Thank you so much for joining this morning. I hope you have a wonderful, blessed Sahaj day ahead. And may we stay surrendered at our mother's feet, just like Sri Ganesha, with sweet tongues and absolute silence within. On that note, we will finish today's meditation. Hope you have a lovely day ahead. Jai Shri Mataji.